Apple's rumored to be combining their iOS and macOS app platform, but will it work for them? Will they run to the same problems as Microsoft? Today I'll talk about it. Stay tuned. So recently, Bloomberg reported that Apple is toying with the idea of merging its iOS and macOS app development platform that will allow, in theory, users to run their iOS apps on their macOS device. So a MacBook Pro could then run Instagram. While this idea sounds pretty intuitive and good on its surface, and it should sound very familiar to those who follow Microsoft, I'm not so sure this is going to necessarily win out. Don't forget, there are a lot of questions here that remain. For instance, this won't probably come out till around 2018, announced during the summer at the Apple Developer Conference, and then later released that fall. By that time, UWP, the Universal Windows platform, will be three years old, giving Microsoft a significant advantage. There's also this other problem that Microsoft faced with UWP early on, which is do users actually want to run phone apps on their PC? Now, for some apps, I think this makes sense, but as we're seeing, this didn't really work out for Microsoft, especially once, obviously, phone failed. Now, UWP has been refocused, as I mentioned earlier in the spring, through heavier desktop applications and bringing Centennial apps to the Windows Store. So what you're seeing now is a refocus on a desktop. Microsoft is doubling down on UWP as a platform for desktop PCs and laptops, and then will work backwards towards mobile instead of going the other direction from mobile to the desktop. Apple seems to be now following in the footsteps, though, in that wrong direction by going from mobile to the desktop. There's a lot of issues here that need to be addressed, though. Now, I followed some developers on Twitter who were discussing this topic, and they talked about how if you make an iOS-only app, scaling up to a 27-inch Mac may be problematic. It'll be a lot easier if you have an iOS app that also runs on the iPhone and iPad, as opposed to just the iPhone. So there's going to be a lot of scaling issues here that developers need to think about and reworking their graphics, just like how it works on UWP. There's also this other problem, the fact that Macs are not touchscreen devices, so everything has to be mouse-based. Now, if you design an application, you have to rethink how everything is going to work. These aren't insignificant problems, as UWP developers have often faced. There's also this other issue here, which is Microsoft is much further ahead in unifying its core operating system. Going back to 2015, there is one core, the unified Windows kernel that runs across all their devices, whether it's phones, even though they technically don't exist much anymore, PCs, laptops, Xbox, HoloLens, all those, they all run the same core. You also have the universal Windows platform, as I mentioned, will be three years old by the time Apple's comes out. There's also now C Shell, the composable shell, where Microsoft is unifying what is known known as a user interface, so it'll scale across all devices. So instead of having a shell for Windows 10 Mobile that's separate from PC and one separate from Xbox and HoloLens, it'll be all built into the operating system and can adjust dynamically based on the device. That is basically a continuum built into every device, and it's a very cool prospect. Now, a unified shell is going to be very interesting for Microsoft as it allows them to create all sorts of new devices. So you can have a Windows 10 PC that can also switch to a Windows 10 Mobile type user interface. Why would you want that on your laptop? Well, you probably wouldn't, but if you create a new device that takes advantage of it, it could be pretty cool. So Microsoft is definitely ahead here. They also have their modularity, what's called Windows Core OS coming out in 2018, which is going to allow OEMs to pull out components like Windows 32 or Telephony support. So again, they can create unique devices. One of those is going to be a Windows 10 S version that is going to be all UWP based. So Microsoft is much further down this road of unifying its operating system. That doesn't mean it's all smooth sailing, of course. What I find really interesting about all this is Apple and Microsoft are starting off from different endpoints. Apple is very successful in mobile right now. In fact, 60% of their revenue comes from the iPhone and they are making a ton of money. There's no argument there, but a lot of their business is based around the iPhone and iOS. That means it's going to drive where the company goes from there. Do users really want to run iPhone apps on their laptops? I'm not really entirely sure, but they don't have really much choice here. The fact is, though, they do want to eventually unify these platforms. There's also a lot of talk that eventually they're going to put iOS on a MacBook Pro, and also MacBook Pros may eventually go ARM-based. That sounds very familiar because that's where Windows is going as well. Microsoft, on the other hand, is starting off in a very different position. They tried in mobile and failed miserably, but they are still very strong on desktop with 90% of the PC market being Windows-based. Their problem, of course, is going from the desktop to mobile and how to get 
there. They're slowly creeping down now with the Surface Series, going from a Surface Pro tablet-like device all the way through Surface Book and back to Surface Studio. Whether or not they can actually succeed in mobile, though, along with Windows Mixed Reality, remains to be seen. But Microsoft and Apple are clearly working towards the same goal here. In the end, I don't think there needs to be a winner between Apple and Microsoft. I think both companies will succeed and achieve the same thing. And let's not leave out Google. They also have the same issue here with Android OS and Chrome OS. So those two are supposed to merge as well, or at least overlap. And we're seeing that same attempt there with running Android apps on Chrome OS, but also running into the same similar user experience problems. Overall, though, I think it's going to be a very exciting thing. All this is going to have ramifications for the next 20 years of computing, so make sure you pay attention. So those are my quick thoughts about the reported plans for Apple. Remember, those could change and they could cancel that project as well. Even German over at Bloomberg was not 100% sure this was going to happen. But let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below and tell me if I'm wrong or if you think Apple's absolutely going to crush it with this plan. Otherwise, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. Recently in Bloomberg, Mark Bloomberg, Mark German. That's the name, right? Mark German. Mark Gurman. Okay. Recently in Bloomberg, Mark Gurman reported that. <laughs> Sorry, it's going to be a long video at this rate.